Okay, so this is uh, where we stop uh, last two. Okay, so as a recap, so we cannot move directly the data, the value to the data segments, registers. Okay, so how to do that? We need to first move that into uh, any other registers that is non-segment register and then only we can shift that, okay, we can move that to the data segment uh, register. All right, uh, okay, so this is, we already discussed, okay, about whether that if the where data is larger than 8 bits, so it cannot be moved to the register that is 8 bit, okay, but for 16 bit, it is okay as long as the data is 16 bit or less. Okay, so for the add addition, we also uh, discuss on Tuesday. So we know that the, the general purpose register uh, is the accumulator okay, because it can do the addition function. Okay. All right. So we have three. Uh, so the assembly language, we have three segments, which is the first one is code segment, second is data segment, and then the third one is the stat segment. Okay, so we already discussed about that, what function of each of the segments. So we already learned about what is our logical address, what is the offset address. Okay. So are you guys clear with the concept of a uh, logical address and the uh, segment uh, physical address? Okay, all right, so we also discussed about on how to add, uh, let's say the location from the register into another register, but we don't want to add the value, so we use the bracket. Okay. Okay, let's look uh, over here. Okay, uh, let's say we have an example. So here, VX, we use it as a pointer. All right, first, we want to initialize uh, our register AL, so which is an 8-bit register, which is the general purpose register. So we put zero on the AL and then VX, we want to move a value of 0, 0200. 0, 0. Okay, so here the VX points to offset address of the first byte. Okay, and then add the first byte to AL. Okay, so we add that value 0, 0200 uh, 0, 0 to AL. Okay, and then INC, 
INC is an uh, increment. Okay, so we increment Bx to the point to the next byte. Alright, and then now of course the Bx will change, right? So it will move to the next byte and then at the next byte, AL. Okay, and then we increase again the Bx. Of course, it will add to the next byte. Okay, and then it will increase. Increment is one by one. Alright, so we keep uh, increase that. Okay, how many times? Three times. Okay. So the INC, the increment instruction, adds one to the operand. Okay. So the example is we achieve the same result as the addition of value of one to that register. Okay. For example, INC BX is similar to add uh, space BX comma one. Okay. Um, the physical uh, address for data is calculated using the same rule for the code segment. Okay, so for the physical address of data is calculated by shifting ds in the data left uh, one hex digit and adding the offset value. Okay, so we look for the example. Okay, let's say we have the ds as 5000 and the offset is 1950 right so we need to calculate the physical address okay so how to do that um all right so we have the offset is 1950 so as you remember that in order to have physical address we need to shift one hex digit right so the ds will be 50000 zero okay and then we add that with the offset so it will become 51950 okay so that's how to do that okay all right so let's look for another example if we have ds7fa2 and then the offset is 438e Okay, first we need to calculate the physical address and then its lower range and also the upper range of the data segment. Okay, and this shows the address. Okay, so how to do that? So it is, okay, so we shift that. So 7F82 and then we add a zero because we shift one hex digit and then we add with 43A E. Okay, so it will become a 3 dae So everyone is clear with that? Okay, so this is simple to find the physical address. And then how about lower range? As I said, for the lower range, so we take the ds and then we add 0, 0, 0, 0, which is for big of the hex digit. Okay, so that is we still obtain 7FA20, okay? And then for the upper bit, so we add with FF, FF. So it will become uh, 8FA1F, right? And then the logical address, so this is one, this is the easiest one. So we just put double dot between 7FA2, double dot, for three, eight e. Okay, all right. So we look for another example. Assume that the DS register is five seven eight c. Okay. To access a given byte of data at physical memory location, okay, six seven f six six. Does the data segment covers the range where the data resides? Okay, if not, what the changes to be made? So how do you know whether that number is covered or not? So we must look at the lower range and upper range of the data segment. All right. So how to do that? So of course we need to shift five seven eight c one hex bit, so it becomes five seven eight c zero, and then 
we add that with 0, 0, 0, 0. Of course, it will still be 578C0. Okay, and then for the upper range, we need to add with FF, FF. So it will become, okay, 678BF. Okay, so you notice that that location is much smaller than the proposed memory location at 67F66. Okay, because that's not within that range. So to access that byte, so the data segment register must be changed so that its range will include that byte. Okay. So we need to change that value so it can cover until that memory location. All right. Um, so we look at a little endian. So little endian convention. So what is that? So previous example, we used a uh, eight bit or one byte of data. What happens when sixteen byte uh, sixteen bit uh, data is used? For example, we use AX. Okay, so over here, so we have the value of 35F3 into AX. Okay, and then that value of AX is offset. It is offset to the data at the data segment of location of 1500. Okay, so you add to the offset. So from there, okay, so from there, you can actually use that memory location to put with uh, some another data. Okay, so we look here. Um, this uh, memory location, so we have right now, Okay, the low byte goes to the low memory location, okay, and the high byte uh, goes to the high memory location, okay. So, over here, so we have the 16 bit, alright, so we have the okay, DS1500, so where the two lower bit, uh, alright, so with the two Sorry, for, that's for the 8 bit. So for the 8 bit, that is based on the, the lower 2 bit. Okay. So we add that to the DS location of 1500, okay, which is the F3. And then for the 335, we add that to the higher memory location of the data segment, which is 1501. Okay. So that 1501 now contains the value of 35 okay so this convention okay, is called the little endian and okay, versus the big endian okay so this is come from the Gulliver's travel story about how an egg should be open all right from the little n or the big n right so because uh, the egg has actually it's both ends, so that end, so so you know that egg, so the egg will, will be curved, okay, it will not be a circle, so if it's a circle, so at any end you can open it, but because the egg is in oval shape, so on the oval shape, so we can either open it on the big end, right, the big end or the little end, so how we should open it. So that's the name, how the names come from, okay? Little Endian and Big Endian. So the Big Endian refers to the higher memory location and the Little Endian uh, refers to the lower memory location. Okay, so this is what I mentioned. So the high byte goes to the high address, okay? And the low byte goes to the low address. Okay, let's look for example here. We assume that memory locations with the following content. So let's say we have the data segment at location 6826. Six, we have the value of 48. And then for the higher location, we have at 6827 with the value of 22. 
Okay. So show the contents of register BX in the instruction. So we want to move the value of 6, 8 uh, to 6. Okay. So according to the little Indian convention used in all uh, 86 uh, microprocessor, the register BL should contain the value from the low offset address of 6, 8 to 6. Okay. And then the register BH value from the offset address, okay, 6, 8 to 7. Okay, so over here, so we have uh, the value of C, uh, DS. So DS 6, 8 to 6 contains as 48. All right, and then DS 6, uh, 8 to 7 contains the value of 22. So the content of 22 will go to the BH and the lower content uh, will be 48. Okay, so that should be easy. All right, so the all Intel microprocessors and my, uh, many controllers uh, the little ambient convention. Uh, for example, uh, Freescale, so formerly Motorola microprocessors along with some other microsis, uh, microcontrollers use big endian okay so motorola use the big endian but the micro intel and also other microcontrollers use little endian convention and uh, for the we have also the extra segment okay so the extra segment extra segment register which is part of the data segment register okay so we have the extra segment register is used as an extra data segment okay so in many normal programs segment is not used so it is used for the uh, essential for the string operation so for string string is like what we write okay so it's like we want to write a statement then we use the string operation Okay, so to map the memory uh, into the IBM PC, so let's say for here, we have to the, uh, we have the 20 bit address of 86 processor, which allows of 1024 kilobytes of memory, okay, with the address range cost from 0000, 000, 000, 000 FF, FFF, FF, FF, okay. And then during the design phase of the first IBM PC, the engineers had to decide on the allocation of the one megabyte memory space to various sections on the PC. Okay. So this is what is called as the memory map. Okay. So we need to decide how to allocate. So we have one megabyte of memory, and then uh, and then how we want to okay distribute okay. How many parts? Let's say we have one megabyte, and then what, uh, let's say you want to have one twenty-eight. Okay, one twenty-eight goes to which uh, which uh, section? All right. So that is called memory ma memory mapping. Okay. And then let's say we have originally in the RAM. Okay. You will just want to put four hundred six hundred forty k into the RAM, and then we allocate another two fifty-six k for the ROM. Okay, so this is in terms of the memory allocation. So you can see that the range of addresses that can be catered by uh, of the segments inside the PC. Okay, so for example, for the RAM, if we have 640k uh, of memory, so the maximum location that can be stored is at the number 9 FF, FF, right? And then after that, we allocate another segment of that uh, memory, so to another for the video display. So that is for another one to take, okay? So it starts from the address of A0000, okay? That is after nine, okay? So after nine, we have A, and then F, or F will become zero. Okay, so that is exactly after that RAM. Okay, and it stop at B, F, 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 F. And then the ROM starts at C0000 and then it ends to the FF, FF, 
f okay, which is the maximum memory space allocated for one megabyte okay so right so this is what i just explained okay so in the early 80s uh, most pcs uh, came with 64k to 256k bytes of ram so which is more than adequate at that time okay so the users has to buy memory to expand up to 644k 640 uh, 640k all right so managing the ram is left to windows because the amount of memory used uh, by windows varies and then the different computers has different amount of ram okay so because actually because we are using the windows os so basically the needs for the ram depends on the application inside the windows that we use let's say we use the adobe photoshop of course it will require um, a lot of ram because it requires graphic processing so we need to store many information many image information before it's transferred to another location that's for that's why when we import if we deal with the graphics uh, software or graphics application we need to deal with the huge amount of ram rather than the application is in terms of text okay so that's the variation of ram that is needed for different kind of software okay so for that reason we do not assign any values for the cs ds and ss registers okay so we keep i mean we keep the uh, the data segment stack uh, segment and all right so the data segment register so we keep it of the reason okay because of the reason because we want to have a uh, ram okay is windows okay so such uh, assignment means specifying an exact physical address okay in the range of 0000 29 nffff okay all right so we allocate that that means that amount okay, that amount is allocated is allocated inside the ram okay so for this for this amount that one can be used for cs ds or ss registers okay all right so from a000 to bfffff so that is used for the video okay so this is depends on the amount used and the location uh, on the video board installed on the PC okay and then uh, as you remember uh, for the video uh, processing so we have uh, usually the user can add the external graphics card okay that's so that's for the video processing so if we add the graphic cards uh, because of course we need to have the graphic card because uh, nowadays we have many we want to uh, see many beautiful screen, many beautiful images right on the screen with a uh, user-friendly interface and so on. So we need to have a huge amount to be stored in the data into the memory. So that is why we need to have usually for better graphics processing, we need to have a, another GPU or graphical processing unit or there is another microprocessor for the graphics okay so we install this in the external card for uh, usually so this card is also uh, actually um, this category based on the processing speed and also based on the allocated memory space so for example we have one gigabyte of the uh, graphics card probably we have the four gigabyte of graphics card okay so this amount uh, varies depending on that store on the pc okay and then from the c000 to ff ff so that is set for the rom okay so not all memory in this range is used by the pc from okay so 64 kilobyte from the location 
okay f f f zero 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 and f f f f are used by bios okay so that is part the end part of that data segment so we have, we have starting from c zero 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 to f f f f and it's starting from f zero zero to f f f so that is used for the bios okay that is the basic input and output system from okay so for other remaining space is used by uh, various adapter cards okay, such as a network card and the rest is free okay so for example maybe later you add uh, another uh, another devices such as the uh, wireless keyboard for example so you need to have that space on the memory spread for those devices and let's say for example you want to add multiple cameras to your pc or you want to add another uh, monitor okay, so let's say you want to have now you have only one monitor later you want to have let's say three monitors to be connected so you need to have space for the instruction to be set okay, to be given to that monitor to function so that instruction needs to be stored inside the ROM okay so only that way then the monitor another extended monitor can work okay all right and then for uh, 6 uh, 44 6 4, 0 kilobytes uh, from 0, 0, 0 to 9 ffff is referred as the conventional memory okay so this is on the ram okay so this is the conventional memory so the 384 kilobytes from the a000 to ffff are called the upper memory block Okay, so upper memory block, like we said, we use for the video processing. Okay, so for this one, okay, so we use for the video processing, okay, video display. So that is upper. Okay, upper memory block. All right. Okay, so there must also be some permanent non-volatile memory to hold the programs telling the CPU what to do when the power is turned on okay so that collection program is referred to the as uh, as a BIOS okay of course you need to start with the BIOS first and then you can instruct okay BIOS will instruct for you to okay now start the Windows okay Windows is the operating system to so start with BIOS okay BIOS will instruct you to start the operating system what if what if our operating system is corrupt if windows is corrupt we still have the bios okay but if bios is corrupt if bios is corrupt of course your um, of course your computer will not be functioning well all right maybe you cannot even turn on your computer so how to solve that problem so you need to refresh your BIOS, okay? So you need to refresh your BIOS. What if you are you cannot flash your BIOS, all right? So that will be a trouble for you because you cannot use that computer anymore. All right. So the BIOS stands for the basic input and output system. So you can this program to test the RAM so whether check whether the RAM is in good condition or not so it, whether it has a back segment or back status or not so if you have back segments then how can we use that location to store the RAM okay uh, so it will test other components connected to the PC okay so it also contains programs that allow Windows to communicate with uh, peripheral devices and then the BIOS test devices to connect to the PC when the PC is turned on and to report any errors because when in the BIOS you want to also making your keyboard working okay making your mouse working all right so that's why the BIOS is important okay uh, all right so I'll stop here for today okay, so we will discuss about the stack okay which is the stack segment uh, uh, next week. All right.
Okay, so I hope it is clear for today's uh, discussion. Okay, so before so let's turn on camera everybody so we can take the picture together. Come on everyone. Okay. All right, so I'm going to come from 10. So 10, 9, 8, 7, uh, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. This might one. Okay. All right. Cheers, everyone. Okay. Okay. So I see you again uh, next week. All right. So that will be your fourth week. So remember that you're gonna have uh, your test one uh, exam soon. I'm going to give you uh, assignments uh, later by um by sunday okay, i'm giving you some assignments okay so you need to finish that so as the exercise for your uh, test right for your test one so might be we're gonna have our test one uh, in the fifth week okay so that will be covered until the introduction of the assembly language all right so we still haven't finished uh, with the introduction of uh assembly language okay so we will try to finish that by tuesday okay so you need to remember what you have learned so far right so any question before i stop the session not at the okay okay so all right so that's it for today okay thank you everyone so have a good weekend. Okay, let's see you early.